Welcome to our premium tank buying guide. This is going to be a part one of a two-part series. We decide for this we're going to break it into two halves to make it a little bit easier for us to go through all this information that we have to give. I've been playing War Thunder for several years, basically since the beginning, and I have about 99% of the premium vehicles are in the game. And all this video will basically be is Bear and I's opinion of what vehicles might be worth your money and which ones probably aren't. Today we're going to do the US and Germany and part 2 is going to be Russian, British, and Japanese. We will be using a rating system of squirrels. Basically one squirrel is a do not buy, five squirrels is a you should probably buy this. So one's bad, five is good, three is average. Starting out we have the M2A4 first armored division in the US tech tree. Let's preview this bad boy, he's 250 golden eagles, it's a rank 1 tank. Well, he has 530 caliber machine guns, but more importantly, he has a 37mm cannon. It's a pretty potent little tank, it's very fast, very maneuverable, and it's quite a bit of fun. Now, it is a rank 1, you're not going to get very far if you're going to use it for grinding or anything like that. We're going to give that 1 or 3. The, uh, the main reason to don't get the 3 rank is just as it can flush out a lineup while you're grinding, and it'll help you get to the good grinding tanks such as the Locust, the Howitzer Sherman, and the M10. Up next, we have the M4A5, which is technically a Canadian tank that sits in the U.S. tech tree. Me and Bear have quite a bit of different opinion of this thing. Me and it have personally never gotten along, but I do see the advantages. I'm not going to say it's a bad tank. Me and it, though, just personally don't have a good relationship. It's essentially uh, Canada's answer to needing cruiser tanks. Uh, the M4A5, you'll commonly be heard, called a RAM. Its official designation, I think, is the RAM 2 cruiser tank. It's based off the Lee chassis, and they got rid of the spontoon mounted gun and installed a 6-pounder uh, cannon. Uh, much like the M2A4, you're going to have a lot of machine guns on this. Uh, it's great for shooting down aircraft at this tier due to the AA-mounted roof one. It, but its armor is where it has its uh, hidden value, because it's stat-wise it's only 88mm, but is very effectively sloped. Um, so if you park yourself up at an angle you'll have the advantage to bounce a couple shots and it's gun being solid shot you will have to penetrate more than once to kill yeah there's no he filler in this gun it's a british gun and i think that's where the uh the difference in opinions lies like i said i don't hate it i just i just don't love it it's it's a good it's a good buy at rank two and yeah, for 1150 golden eagles for a rank two tank we're gonna give it three squirrels out of five yeah it complements an m10 and a m4 uh lima lineup up next, we have the T-14, which is basically a heavy Sherman. It's it's much, I think it follows the same concept the British were doing with the Excelsior, um, where they took, in that case, a Cromwell chassis and lengthened it and widened it. I think that the Americans were trying to do the same thing with this. It's 1,600 Golden Eagles. It has decent armor. Uh, yeah, it's, it's sufficient. If you can, given how it's uh, the shape of the armor you can you are allowed to angle it at uh 45 to 30 degrees and that will increase its thickness and the impact angle to bounce more and the 75 millimeter gun will kill anything at this battle rating so it has adequate firepower it has decent armor it's it's a good starter for the heavy tank line we'll give that one three squirrels again i enjoyed it a lot though when i played it it's a it's a tank you don't see very often so that'll actually work in your advantage um people probably won't know uh its weaknesses and then up next, we have the M18 Black Cat Bundle. And the M18 Black Cat Bundle, you can get it for $22.99 US dollars on, this, on the War Thunder store. That comes with 15 days of premium. It is also for sale in a Steam Pack for $39.99. And that pack comes with the M18 Black Cat and the P47M. So either of those would be really good buys in my book. The M18 is constantly spammed in War Thunder, and there is a reason. It's a very effective tank destroyer basically a very fast go-kart with a 76 millimeter cannon on it and this guy can be a grinding machine for your us lineup i believe it's a hundred percent yep uh old premium tanks will get a 100 percent or old premium vehicles will get a 100 percent booster on lines and research gain um when you talisman a vehicle in the normal tech tree it only gets you the rp boost so this m18 will help you both grind out your rank four and uh lower uh tech tree but also help you make some credits on the way in the U.S. lineup, this is probably one of the best buys that you can do. And there's a reason you see these things in every U.S. 5.3 match. They can be very effective. We'll give that one five squirrels. Like I said, you have two purchasing options. 
the M18 will be a, uh, it'll, it's a buy that won't let you down. Up next, we have the T20, which is 2,980 Golden Eagles. This is a tank that I didn't think I'd like at first, but actually grew on me over Operation Summer a lot. It's a very small, low-profile tank with a pretty good cannon. It has the 76mm cannon, which is very good at a 5.0 battle rating. It's, uh, it's pretty maneuverable, pretty speedy for what it is. That, uh, that cannon um, does have an option of a solid shot or an APHE, so you are able to engage. If you can't penetrate with the APHE, you just switch to the solid shot, which gets you 30 more millimeters of penetration. I think Bear and I both agree that it is a 5 squirrel rating. 5 squirrel. We probably put the M18 slightly above this guy, but if you do not want a tank destroyer, if you don't want a Hellcat, this is a good alternative. Up next, we have the Calliope, which... I think we uh, we both agree is not the best use of your money. It has a price tag of 9,740 Golden Eagles. That'll add up to about $50. Yeah, so you're getting up in the $50 price range. Essentially, just a Sherman. There's nothing special on it in the chassis or the hole or the turret or the gun. You just have all these rockets above it. And the rockets, although can be effective, I think they're there more for novelty than effectiveness. I personally, every time I take one of these rocket tanks out, every piece of RD seems to ha somehow find it, and I ammo rack and cry. Yeah, you've got, um, on top of the artillery being able to ammo rack you, uh, you also have the fat giant I'm over here marker. You may be holding down the tank, but these rockets are sitting up here going, hey, I'm behind this rock. Which, uh, given how some of the walls and buildings can be shot through, if they see a giant uh, rectangle box popping up above a building, you know they know to aim about 20 degrees down. It is, although, very enjoyable to launch several rockets at people as they're trying to figure out why this is happening to them. Yeah, you'll just hear on the anti team streaming, oh god, why me? We will give this guy two squirrels. I know it's pretty harsh, and a lot of people like this thing, but for the price tag... It's the price. It's one of the things I think you buy if you have everything else you come back to this the m26 t99 is for sale for 5990 golden eagles you must buy the calliope to buy this guy which as you can probably imagine that's going to affect our judgment of the m26 t99 basically all this is is a pershing with rockets on the side there they are it's kind of neat but since you have to buy the other guy first so sadly this thing's going to get judged uh on something it can't it's not going to be affected with. So it's going to get a two squirrel rating as well, because that's a lot of money. Definitely see if these things go on sale. I'd say you're going to need at least a 75% off for the Calliope for a decent value. And then at least, and then if it, actually the M26 sits for full price at its comparative to all the other tier fours is not a bad buy. All right, let's jump back to the Cobra King which is the bane of a lot of people's existence right now in War Thunder. It is a very, very effective U.S. heavy tank. The Jumbo has very, very strong armor in the front. As you can see, the turret is also a tough cookie to crack. There is one weak spot people love to shoot through, which is this machine gun port right here. The 75mm gun can kill 90% of things you see at this battle rating. You just need to make the switch between APCR and your normal shell as you need and aim in the right spot, and that gun will take her down. The main thing you have to worry about at this battle rating is things like Tigers, Dicker Maxes. You're looking, yeah, big, big caliber guns. You're going to be able to shove around most of the things you see on the battlefield. I do suspect that this thing will probably go up in battle rating again, which would change our ranking of this, but we can only give you an opinion on the current state of the game, and in the current state of the game, this is a 5 squirrel rating. If you want to grind up quite a bit of the US Tech Tree, for 2,980 Golden Eagles, the Cobra King is probably a solid purchase. Up next, we have the T-28, which I personally find very enjoyable. It's uh, it's a tough nut to crack frontally. Actually, I don't think it's even possible to crack frontally at its battle rating. A lot of armor in the front. This is uh, one of the reasons I really enjoy this thing is fear factor. You come barreling down a road and you just kind of see the red sea part because all the tanks go, oh no, and then just move out of the way. It's a very nasty gun. There is another variant of this thing called the T95 Endgame, which has two sets of tracks and additional armor. Let me pull that up real quick for you to see. As you can see, two sets of tracks, and it has some more armor here on the side. This is why this is 6.7. The other guy here, the T28 Premium, is at a 6.3 battle rating. You don't have that extra side armor, which does make a difference. 
But if you keep this guy back... Play it like an assault gun, don't play it like a heavy tank. We give this guy a rating of four squirrels. Me, personally, it's one of my favorites in the U.S. tech tree. It suffers from what I like to call mouse syndrome, where if it's a big map, you're not in there before the battle's over. Or started, I mean. Yeah, she's not very quick. No. Um, if the price tag's a little high, a coupon is a good idea, or Talisman the T95 in the normal tech tree. Up next, we have the Super Hellcat, which is a normal M18 with a 90mm gun on top. It's the same gun that you will find on the Jackson. It's a fun thing to use at the 6.3 battle rating. It'll be competing with things that are fast. Um, early tiers, you're not looking at many fast things in the Hellcats range. At this tier, you're going to be looking at things like T-54s, T-44s. You won't have as much free reign, but you do have a very punchy gun. We give this guy four squirrels. I think this is something that you buy after you buy... Things like the Jumbo, like the T-29, possibly the T-28. This is something that you add to your U.S. lineup after you buy the other things that you want. Up next, we have the M26E1. Uh, from what I've been able to tell, it's just an experimentally mounted 90 mil. It's a much longer one than the one you'll find on the standard Pershing, which allows it to have more penetration. For the price tag of 7,480 Golden Eagles, it's hard for me to say, yes, this is a must-buy. I play quite a bit of the Pershings, and my personal favorite is the T26E1-1 Super Pershing. This extra set of armor here does make quite a bit of difference. The Super Pershing has two sets of spaced armor on the front of it, so you'll be Hessian heat shells will have some problems. So we give the M26E1 a scroll rating of 3, basically average. Up next, we have the T-29, which is currently for sale in the War Thunder store for $39.99, so $40. You get 1,000 Golden Eagles and 7 days of premium. The T-29 is, I'd say its stock is a little bit down. Every couple of patches, they seem to make adjustments to it in one way or another. It is, though, I would say, like in your War Thunder Ground Forces portfolio, this is one of the things that you want to add. This is a tank that you can grind out if you're trying to get into Tier 4 and Tier 5. It's uh, it's very forgiving for a new player. It has a variant of the same cannon, the T-28 and T-95 mount. Um, so you do have access to that very deadly T-13 shell. Uh, it's armor. Yeah, it's, it's armor's forgiving. It's one of those tanks you want to get hull down. You have a turret that is a tough nut to crack. The chassis, very easy to crack. The chassis has uh, the... Machine gunner position weed spot, and the lower plate is very thin. She'll do some work for you. We give this guy five squirrel rating, like I said, if you're looking to grind out some tier it's four and tier it. five U.S. tanks. It's also, um, as a tier four, it's efficient at grinding tiers one through five. So it's a good buy for all-around grinding. The last U.S. tank that we have to look at is the M46 this Tiger. recently adjusted from SIT-7 to 7 well, That's because they got a new ammo type. She recently was added the M348 shell, which is a heat FS round, <laughs> and it destroyed everything in its path, which is why it was moved back up to 7.0. It's moved in battle rating a lot. So like I said, in the current state of the game, I think it is a four scroll rating, very good gun, very it's a, it's an overall, I would say, balanced tank. Uh, you get the decent amount of armor frontally. Um, it's enough to stop most shells at odd angles or if you're hull down using your ridge line your turret is thick enough to bounce uh, it's got decent maneuverability for its size it has a great horsepower to ton ratio and we give this guy four squirrels and that wraps up our u.s tanks up next we have the germans up first we have the panzer II dock which is 250 golden eagles it is a slightly more armored version than normal panzer II. 20 millimeter cannon here. We got a machine gun here. And it's a fun little early tier tank. Um, you just drive around and you pew pew at people, it's basically. It's a good buy for someone who just wants to seal club. Well, okay. yeah, it's a good buy for anyone who just wants to kit back and just dock It's a dock party. 250 golden eagles. I think it's a fun little cheap purchase. It's one of those tanks, if high tiers is getting you down, drop down to this thing. All right, up next we have some kind of confusing purchases but we'll do our best to explain it to you. One of the tanks here is not shown in the actual Ground Forces tech tree. You have to go to the Steam store to find it, and that is the Panzer 2H, which is in a 999 bundle, which comes with 500 Golden Eagles. 
Also in that bundle comes the... It comes in a bundle with the Aftlarens Panzer on the Panzer 38T chassis. It's effectively just a stout modification um, of a Panzer 38. Yeah, so you get these two guys for $10 plus 500 Golden Eagles. It's a pretty good lineup, and you can take that Panzer 2H into higher tiers if you want to have some fun. It's a really good buy for $10. We will give that five squirrels for the Panzer Pack on the Steam Store. If you just buy the little 20mm 38T, I would give that probably three squirrels. It's $7 on the War Thunder Store, so for three more dollars, you're getting another Panzer 2H that you'll probably find quite a bit of use out of. For some reason, I have a fascination with multi-turreted tanks. This guy was added to the game. I thought I would enjoy it. I tried it many times, and I can't love this thing. Cannot find my love for it. Has two guns right here in the turret. You also have a couple Panzer II turrets here and here. Uh, the guns is a 75mm short barrel and a 37mm short barrel side by side. Um, it's one of those things, interwar, a lot of countries were looking to... Actually, I think Germany peaked off with the land ship concept. Um, big vehicles that can pierce lines and have multi-purpose, hence their multi turret machine guns. My biggest issue with it is it's very tall, it's very big, and the armor is very lacking. There's next to no armor. Personally, I think that the, the Russian T-35 is a better, better purchase than this guy. Uh, for 1,750 Golden Eagles... I'm going to give it two squirrels just out of my personal experience with it. I think, like I said, you can you can spend $10 and get two awesome low-tier tanks versus this thing. Yeah, and the low, the other the bundle will be much better at grinding. Um, the Aftlaren Spencer is the same battle rating and has more armor as a light tank. So survivability is not in its favor. Up next, we have the Panzer 3N for 1,000 Golden Eagles. This is a later war variant. I believe it was 1943 designed to see support infantry. It's a very, very short 75mm cannon as its primary armament. It's 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 well armored, um, but very maneuverable. for it's, it's a Panzer III. The firepower is what most people will find lacking. It's very situational tank. You'll come up with some things and you'll immediately just smite it. Um, you run across other things and you get smited. It's, it's a very situational tank. I will give it three, three squirrels. Yeah, three is fair. Once again, in real life, this was not meant to be a tank on tank thing. This was a tank versus infantry design. I personally picked this up when they added destruction to buildings because I thought it'd be a lot of fun to drive around and blow up stuff. I personally find this thing more as a novelty item. It's 4,800 Golden Eagles. Yeah, it um, doesn't help frontal if you're going to face frontally um you're shooting over the cab you're shooting over the cab so you don't have as much depression you gotta do some drive-bys where you gotta you know set up in a ambush position yeah i, th I think a way uh similar to the f uh, 88 flat truck um you want to set up in a corridor where you can poke your rear around the corner fire off a couple shots and then drive forward to get out of the line of sight but for 4,800 golden eagles you can buy several other tanks at this rank yeah, it'll serve you much better if you pick up those. Um, it just doesn't have the armor to sustain fire. Even just at its own tier, uh, at 3.7, you can pick up almost uh, three tanks, the other three tanks in the tier 2 rank, or in the rank 2 uh, premium category, for the same price. We give this guy a rank of two squirrels, just because really of the price. After that, we have the T-34 747R. Comparatively, it um, the tank it compares well with in the Soviet Tetri is the T-34E STZ. Um, both of them have the welded on extra 15 or so millimeters of armor on front on the front. Um, the advantage that the 747 captured one gives you is it has a length of track running along the side. So that gets you an extra 18 millimeters of armor. Um, this T-34 was is a good buy for the German line, um, especially if you're a Soviet player who likes the T-34 style. And at the price of 2,460 Golden Eagles, it's not going to break your bank. We'll give this, what do you think, four, four squirrels? Four squirrels. It's a good mobile chassis um, with a decently punchy gun. You see them maybe two to three each in each match at this rating. They're not overly common. But they're not rare. Um, it's a good tank to use to flush out a 4-0 lineup. 
Up next, we have the Churchill, which is, to my knowledge, exactly like the Churchill you'll find in the British tech tree, but gray and fighting for the Germans. For all intents and purposes, it's a Churchill Mark III, just been repainted and marked in German markings. If, if you're a fan of the Churchill Mark III in the British line and you just want, uh, for, for the price, it's one of those tanks you get after you've gotten everything you want out of the German line and you're just looking to expand. Um, it's got a decently competitive gun when you load that uh, shot Mark IX. And it can mess with the other team's heads if they see a Churchill driving towards them. Personally, I want to see a Churchill fight another Churchill. Stop Churchill on Churchill. I, I would violence. think that'd be quite amusing to see this thing find a British Churchill. I've never seen that, but I want to see Churchill versus Churchill. Here we go again. Where both crews just kind of throw their hands up in the air and go, oh, crap, make this end. Uh, we give this guy at a price of 1,600 gold eagles. Three squirrels, like I said, it's just average. It's um, it's 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 not gonna ch game be a game changer, but it is effective at for what it is. Up next, we have this kind of uh special guy. This is a command Panzer IV. It is very similar to the Panzer IV J that you'll find in the normal tech tree, except you get some fancy antennas. You get some mesh armor bolted on the side here. Yeah. Um. What happened is a lot of times. They would, uh, later in the war, they'd use these uh, for the command squadron. They'd outfit them with multiple radios, and this will allow your commander to stay in touch. These metal sturts on the side will help with heat shells, um, because heat does not like angles, spacing, or um, it's sturt armor. Um, it's a good, it, the, the main drawback you'll find with this, like you find with the Panzer 4J and the normal Tetri, is you just do not have a good turret traverse. That turret traverse takes days. You're looking at just just above three and a half degrees a second. So it will take you a while to crank the turret. Um, what you'll find most drivers will do is they'll turn their tracks in the uh, same direction, allowing the track traverse to do most of the work. It is a somewhat unique tank, but we're going to give it three squirrels just because. Much like the Churchill, it's something if you enjoy the Panzer, the late Panzer IV's play styles. Uh, pick it up and it'll help you grind out, especially since it's a tier three. It'll help you in the tier four grinding. Up next, we have the Brumbar for 2,980 gold eagles. You have that lovely 150 millimeter howitzer right there. Um, this is one of the tanks that it's very um, comparative to the KV2 or SU-152's uh, designated roles. Um, it'll play very similar. You do not want to be sitting in front of guns during your reload. Uh, it's reloads comparable to the SU's reload. It's really satisfying to blow something up with that gun. Um, you'll uh, uh, the other like short barrel 150s, like the Stern Panzer stuff at that rating. They decimate what's at that rating because they've got no armor. Um, a big concern when this thing was introduced, in my view, was if it ha would have the penetration to deal with stuff at its tier, and its heat shell has a 185 millimeters of penetration, so it can deal with what's at its tier. We give this guy four squirrels out of five? Four, yeah. Um, it's a little bit on the pricey side, but it is a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun every time we take these things out, especially in a squad. If you get a alternating fire line of Brumbars, nothing's getting down that road. After that, we have the KV-2754R, which is a captured KV-2. This guy is a destroyer of worlds. This is a great anti-everything tank. Um, it will kill your Hellcats. It will kill your Jumbos. It will kill your little AA cars. Well, you can just crush them if you need to do that. Oh, yeah, just, just drive them into a wall. One thing that it has going for it is it is, uh, unlike the, um, the Churchill, where it has a very different paint scheme um, than the British one, this one, if you can get the winter camouflage on, you will look just like a normal Soviet KV-2 minus the Capola. So it's a very minor difference that most players um, take a second look to notice. I've had multiple T-34s and KV-2s drive right by me, um, not even giving a second look. We give this guy, I would say, five squirrels. Yeah, it's a five squirrel. It's a good buy. If you, it's it's fun to take out. Um, at 4-3, there's not a whole lot they can complement in a lineup, but it is a lot of fun. 
uh, especially if you're a player that enjoys the no original Davy Do. Moving on, we have the Panzer 470A. Um, it's essentially it's 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 the same uh, chassis as the Panzer 470V, but what you'll find is this one is instead of a fully integral hull casemate like you'll find on the Hetzer or the uh, Yad Panzer 38. Um, you'll find this one maintained that flat front where the driver port was. So it, it does have a little bit of a weed spot there. Um, it does have a very, very punchy gun. Um, it's great for dealing with your jumbos because it has 185 millimeters of penetration. It can be a bit trolly with the bouncing. Um, its armor is sloped fairly well. You can find it on the War Thunder store for $17.99. Comes with 2,000 gold eagles in seven days, so it doesn't cost you an arm and leg. I think we both agree that it's probably a four squirrel. Yep, it's a, um, it's a good buy, especially if you like the German teasmate tank destroyer playstyle. Um, its APCR shell does have 225 millimeters of penetration, so you will be able to punch through anything it will face uh, should the need arise. After the Panzer 470, we have the Yag Panther at 6.3 for 6,090 gold eagles. This is a, essentially just a uh, the same Yad Panther you'll find in the Tetri, but I believe it is the Command variant. Um, you'll find it has an extra antenna on the left-hand side. Um, this was, back when Ground Forces was first introduced, one of only two uh, Tier 4 premiums, the other one being the Porsche Tiger. Uh, what you'll find is at the, now at this stage of the game with, so many, with the other two Tier 4s being introduced, um, the Yad Panther PM has kind of been neglected. You don't, you don't see many Yad, Yad Panthers. Um, it has a very punchy gun. Uh, it will not struggle to kill anything it sees. At sits 3, it's, it's, it sits well as battle rating. It's very maneuverable because it's off the Panther chassis. Uh, you will have the same problem of the reverse gear, however. So do not expect to reverse anywhere fast. I think we both agree that it is a three squirrel buy right now. Um, if if you do enjoy the Ad Panther and you wanted uh, something to grind with, you can always talisman the one in the normal Tetri for around probably about two thousand to fifteen hundred. Up next, we have the Tiger Two H SLA sixteen. She is for sale in the War Thunder store for thirty nine nine nine, one thousand Golden Eagles, six days of premium. Um, the Main differences you'll find compared to the Tiger II and the normal Tetri is the SLA has, multi has more trats on uh, the side of the turret, so it has more space armor essentially, which is nice as most tanks if uh, the Tiger II does not have very thick side armor on its turret, so the extra 30 millimeters is welcomed. Uh, you'll also find it has an, uh, on the commander's hatch, it has an AA mounted machine gun. I believe this has a diesel engine instead of the normal petrol one the king tiger has so you'll get a little bit more horsepower um so you are able to get going a little faster she does maneuver better than the normal tiger too has an extra 50 horsepower so it you'll find it maneuvers quite well it gets up to speed quite well and can hold its speed up in lines if you're gonna buy only one premium tank for the german lineup it, yep. i would recommend this be the tank to do it in the King Tiger is a solid buy for a premium. Given the current state of the game with the British 20-pounders and other guns that can mount your APDS shells, uh, you'll find the turret and some armors do not hold up. The gun is still quite capable of punching and killing anything it faces. You will just have to mind your armor is not bulletproof. And that's the current state of the game. I suspect in the future that you're going to probably see some changes with the British tanks. I suspect they will go up in battle rating. Even right now, it's current state, I would still give it five squirrels. I know the Germans are suffering right now, but I still think this is a great buy. It's still a very good buy. And after that, we have a couple more tanks. We have the Porsche Tiger at 5.7 battle rating for 6,090 Golden Eagles. It does have the 88mm cannon. It's very effective. Its turret diverse is a little bit on the slower side. The, um, the main selling point you'll find on this is it has an extra 100mm frontal armor, but it's not a whole lot to work with, uh, especially it's not worth the price tag for that only. And we have one more tank, the RU-251 for 7,480 Golden Eagles. 
This is one of the newer premiums that was added. Personally, before this was added, I always felt that the Germans would really benefit from having a light tank that was very mobile. And the RU251 fits that niche very well. I guess you can compare it to the M18 for the US lineup. Uh, water Bulldog is a fair assumption as well. The cannon is very, very good and has very good options for your ammo. You have a Hesh round with 100 millimeters penetration. You also have the Heat FS round with 320 millimeters of penetration. It may not be a great tank for a beginner player. I think this is something you visit when you're more advanced and you're more comfortable with War Thunder and you're looking for something. It definitely prepares for the Leo's playstyle um, of a maneuverable, punchy, fast tank with no armor. You can kill anything. Anything can kill you. If something sneezes at you. We will give her, we think, five squirrels? Yeah, yeah, five. Um, it's just five for a experienced player, uh, wait a little for a new player. And that will conclude our review for today. Like I said, in part two, we will do the Russians, we will do the British, and we will do the Japanese. We just wanted to break this up so we would have a bit more time to talk about the Americans and the Germans. We didn't want to rush this and skip over anything that you might need to know. If you have any questions or have anything you'd like to share about our opinions, please leave a comment below. We will do our best to answer everything and anything that you ask. I hope you enjoyed this video. We will catch you on the next one.